Welcome to lecture 29, which will perhaps be the shortest lecture of the entire semester because we're going to go ahead and just jump directly to the test. Uh, you know, in the last several lectures, we've been talking about the design of a sequential circuit to detect uh, the input sequence 0, 1. Uh, in other words, we wanted to output a 1 whenever the two most recent inputs form the sequence 0, 1 and output a 0 at all other times. Well now, in this test, we want to design a sequential circuit that detects the input sequence 1, 0. So again, <clears throat> what we mean there is that we want to output a 1 if and only if the two most recent inputs form the sequence 1, 0. And at all other times, we want to output a 0. Now, just as we did in the um, circuit that we just finished discussing, you may assume that there have been previous inputs and that all of these were 0. And so, in 29.1, I'm asking you which is the correct transition table. And in 29.2, I'm asking you which is the correct excitation table if A and B are both produced by JK flip-flops. And let me make one more comment. Uh, just as we did in the previous problem, we'll define S0 to be the state uh, for which the last two inputs are the sequence 0, 0. S1 is the state in which the most recent two, uh, instead of last, you can say most recent, the most recent two inputs are 0, 1. S2 is the state in which the most recent two inputs were 1, 0. And S3 is the state in which the most recent two inputs form the sequence 1, 1. And now, you know, those, those uh, you didn't have to call it that way, but that's the way I've decided to do this, and that's what I want you to do, uh, because that uh, agrees with what we did in our previous case, and I think that'll make it easier for you to follow this. Furthermore, uh, and this is another case where if you were designing this on your own, you would have the option of uh, letting S0 correspond to any one of these four combinations of A and B and S1 could could and S2 could and S3 could uh, and in each case you could assign these in any way you wished uh, but again I'm going to uh, uh, say don't do that in this case uh, do just as we did again in the previous problem that is S0 will correspond to A is 0 and B is 0, S1 will correspond to A is 0 and B is 1, S2 will correspond to A is 1 and B is 0, and S3 will correspond to A is 1 and B is 1. So in other words, I'm setting everything up exactly like we did in the previous problem. And I'm simply asking you to try to go through this design process now with exactly the same setup and the only difference now is that we're trying to detect the sequence 1, 0 rather than the sequence 0, 1. Uh, so this, you know, expect this to take you a little bit of uh, time. I think that it will probably force you to go back and review what we did and then to make the appropriate changes. And again, you see uh, here in 29.1, you want to identify which is the correct transition table and you have four possibilities here, A, B, C, and D. And then 29.2, you want to identify which of these is the correct excitation table if uh, A and B are both produced by JK flip-flops. And so here is A, uh, and that's excitation table. I didn't write out excitation table, uh, but each one of these is indeed an excitation table. As you can see, J, A, and K, A are the excitations for the JK flip-flop that produces A and JB and KB are the JK inputs for the JK flip-flop that produces B. So uh, here is your excitation table for A and here's the one for B 
and here's the one for C, and finally here's the one for D. So you want to identify which of those excitation tables is correct, and then uh, 29.3 will be in class, but I think you can probably guess what that's going to be, which is that I'm going to, you know, the, the last step in this sequence would be uh, before we can actually come up with the circuit, what we want to do, of course, is find J, A, K, A, J, B, K, B, and Z, all of these as functions of X, A, and B. And so I think it's a fairly safe bet that in 29.3 in class, I'm going to ask you to find the correct functional expression for uh, at least one of those j a or k a or j b or k b or z and possibly more than one but at least one of those uh, so um, that concludes this lecture and uh, good luck